Welcome to everyone joining us for the meeting taking place at Fairview. Racing is on the turf track. The first race is due for 12.55 over 1,000 metres. Nice to have Rahil in studio today. I believe this is your first meeting for Fairview. Yes, it certainly is, Sheldon, and uh, looking forward to it. It does look to be a tricky card where you could get a few nice results along the way, but I'm um, looking forward to the card and what's your take on it? Looking at the card, as you mentioned, always competitive in Fairview. I see the last two meetings, there's been some bomb results. So let's see how the meeting goes. Did you see that uh, place accumulator last week? Unbelievable. I mean, with Madness. those type of horses sure. arriving, scary. Scary, scary. And uh, for those that were in the winning line, extremely well done to them. 100%. The first race, having a look at the favourite, which is number nine, Devan Design from the Adam Kreef stable. And he's also got the second favourite, number three, Emily Spirit. So they seem to set the standard in the opener. Devon Designs had the three runs to date, second, second and third. And then we had the source, Emily Spirit, who's also been runner-up in, I think, the last four runs, coming back from a 95-day absence. Raheel, these two horses seem to set the standard, but they have been beaten. They have been beaten. They have found one too good and two too good in the form of Horse number nine, Divine Design, last time out. And if you're willing to take the seven to ten about Divine Design once again, then uh, you are certainly a brave man after beating, after getting beat last time out at one to five. Terribly disappointing. And if one of these two runners don't crack their maiden in this field, I think they're going to struggle to win a maiden. They should really finish one in second, but I think there's a lot more value with the stable companion Emily Spirit at 33 to 10 as opposed to seven to ten as a horse that was beaten at one to five last time out. I think the guys who got beat last time on the horse said that's it, yeah, quarter of the day. So he might be on the right one there. So that's race number one and Rahil leaning probably with number three, Emily Spirit, which could end up being the value in the contest. As we move along to race number two, and as we get to race number two at Fairview, we'll have a quick look. It's over 1,200 metres, 13.30 is the off time. Number eight, Dreamt I Could Fly, and number one, Let Me Go. Those will be the top two selections. Dreamt I Could Fly, now with the Gavin Smith stable, makes the local introduction, gets a set of blinkers on. The filly taking on the boys will be the narrow first selection. However, saying that, number one, Let Me Go with the Mitchley stable. Had the one run there when second last time out, and with the neat draw, a lot in the favour. Where will you be leaning in the second race, Rahil? I'll be with number one, let me go, Sheldon. I showed quite a, put, uh, quite a bit of pace on debut in Fairview, and ran a nice race in second position, and I dreamt, uh, dreamt I could fly. Blinkers on, should be sharper over this 1200 metre trip, and there's certainly a horse that could do well over in Fairview. But in terms of the place accumulators, I'm happy to go with numbers one and eight. When you said I dreamt, I thought you were going to say you dreamt that Lemmy Go went on to win, so maybe that's an omen, so maybe, take the knows? boxed exactors. It, it does look to be that way, boxed exactors between numbers one and eight in race number two. Now we move along to race number three, which is the start of the pick six at Fairview, 2,000 meters a trip, and this is a maiden plate, quite a competitive start to that pick six. But um, horses like Douglas Devastator, Mount Soraya, certainly ones that have to be in with winning shouts, they've been consistent. And Amant Soraya would possibly be the narrow first choice. I know that uh, in terms of a winning, from a winning point of view, she's been costly to follow, but she could get it right in this lineup. Box uh, draw and a Samanga Kamala board. Opening ceremony will be the value for me at around 9 to 2 in the market. Big improvement last time out. Louis Courtois gets a ride, steps up in trip, and I think the trip is uh, what this horse is looking for. Well, now when you come down to number one, opening ceremony, who better than Duncan McKenzie? He knows how to set them up. There's been a lot of activity in the betting market of late, and they pulled off a number of coups. And he has a horse who's coming along the right way, steps up to the 2,000 meter trip. And I think you could be onto the right horse there. The other runners are quite fully exposed. So number one, opening ceremony. I definitely agree with Rahil. That will be the value selection in the race. Number six, Douglas Devastator. That's the horse they all got to beat but keep a close eye on number one. As we move along to race number four, which is over 2,400 metres, due off at 14.40. And when it comes to race number four, number three, American Landing, opened up 7 to 1, has shortened down 11 to 2. Old Soldier, an eight-year-old son of Dynasty, he'll be my first selection. 
Last run was drawn 15 out of 15 when staying on at the latter stages behind War Man, which brings number two Magnum Fire into the equation. But Rahil, when you look at number three, American Landing was a 101 at once upon a time, races off a 70, but is low on confidence. He is low on confidence, Sheldon, and to believe that he's only a four-time winner from 52 starts having achieved a mark of 101 and now dropped to a 70. It's a bit scary. I thought he'd win his fair share of races, but uh, it could be the ideal opportunity on Tuesday for him to notch up career victory number five. So I'll respect for American Landing. Drink Ferry is a horse that I've thrown into the mix. Drawn in gate number seven at around 12 to one in the market, I think could represent some value. Almas Tower just ran the other day, ran second, and uh, one that you have to include into the mix along with that Vida Futura. But for Sheldon, American Landing does look to be the value. And for myself, I'll be with the uh, number six, Drinks Ferry. So two value choices in race number four. Now we'll move along to race number five on the program, a race set to be run of the 1400 meter trip. And this is an MR80 handicap. This was Gold Rock. I've been following him with keen interest in his last few starts, but he's a horse that he's just been disappointing. I thought Ryan Munger has given him every opportunity to go on with the effort, but he just doesn't seem to want to go on and win a race. He's been priced up at 4-1 to one in the market. In this type of field, this is the last chance for Gold Rock. He's dropped down to a mark that he's, he has to be competitive off. He should get his next win off this mark, Sheldon. And drawn in gate number five, I think Gold Rock can go close here, but he's a horse that he is vulnerable and others have to be included in, into the mix. Certainly other horses have to be included, but I am in your camp with number 10, Gold Rock. Certainly is overdue for the next victory. When you look at the form, all three wins have been achieved on the turf. He's got a course and distance victory and a string of placings to his credit. Looking at the balance of the field, number two, Mklabeni from the Duncan McKenzie stable. Now he has a horse I think who could muddy the waters and make the stable have a big day. Absolutely, he's a horse that's a bang in form. He does have a deep draw to contend with, but he shows quite a bit of gate speed and likely to go to the head of affairs and Africa's Rock to want to include into the mix as well with both resolve. So a tricky race is a start of a jackpot two and I include a couple of horses just to get through. Now in race number six, it's a classified stakes over 1400 meters and Duncan McKenzie could be, could be to the fore once again, Sheldon. Rose off Bayou. Looks to be the one that they all have to beat just based on a last victory where I thought she won quite comfortably beating Chronicles of Narnia, having to concede four kgs. That was in a big field of 16 runners. This is a much smaller field now. She's drawn out in gate number eight, but that's not a concern for me. Louis Courtois knows her well, and I think Rose of Bayou can make it back-to-back -back victories. Certainly can make it back-to-back -back victory. She's come to form with the second and then winning last time out, as you mentioned. Looking at the weight, 56 kilograms on the back. Number seven, Track Commander will be the interesting runner for me. That's the horse that I believe the filly has to beat. And Track Commander, it has been 64 days since last winning when beating Senor Gracia in KwaZulu Natal. And after that has been a model of consistency. Gavin Smith now has this individual in his care, and I think that'll be the main danger. So perhaps number four, Rosa Bayou, and number seven, Track Commander. Those are the two horses you can take your exactors and your swingers with. And then if you're looking for anything else to throw in, let's look for a Ruffy, perhaps number two, a bonus star for the longer play, Rahil. I have to agree with you, 14 to 1 in the market should represent some value. Now we move along to race number 7. It's a Phillies and Mears 90 handicap over the 1200 meter trip. And we see Ikoria in action returning off a 109 day layoff. She gets the services of young apprentice Sianda Sosibo, takes the 4 kgs off the back. And that was the cracking fought in the Alan Robertson in uh, KZN at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. Then she was a uh, Bound to win her next start after that cracking fight. She got the job done beating Double Destiny. She's been given a mark of 109. She does get the four cages off the back, which is certainly going to come in clutch in this uh, race. And Ikoria, one of the leading lights, but the way this horse, Peach Dakri, Rom Tom on debut, Sheldon. Eight and a half lengths. Debut winner. Comfortable. I mean, how impressive was that? 
must have shown them some exceptional work. The, the old saying goes, catching pigeons back home. So this must have been one of those horses that was absolutely flying back home. 8 to 1 into 5 to 2 on debut. The money was down. They didn't expect anything but a victory. So a horse with a reputation and probably going to look to go back to back. 54.5 kilograms on the back for number 8, Peach Daiquiri. An unbeaten horse is always very, very dangerous. And number 8, Peach Daiquiri. The horse they all got to set their sights on. Number 1, Coria and then throw in number two sound check when it comes to the trifectas and the quartets. We then move on to the lucky last which is race number eight. One hurdle left to negotiate. 1200 meters the distance due off at 1650 and looking at race number eight let's just have a look at the current betting. Number two blonde act is 33 to 10. Psychedelic Eric number six is four to one. 5 Bethel is 11 to 2, 7 to 1, and better the rest. Rahil number 2, Blonde Act, makes the local introduction. And just going on the Son of Act of War's form, I think there's a lot in the favour. I think quite a bit in his favour, given that he's taken on stronger company, but the negative has to be that he goes over 1200 at, uh, at Fairview. He's a horse that's been campaigning over the 1800 meter trip, 1600 and 1400 as well. So the drop in trip is a concern for me, and I think that he's beatable. The horse that I'm going to, two horses in fact, that I'm going to lean with. Numbers three, Jean Paul. Jose Ramsen gets the best out of this individual for the Sharon Cotson team. He's back aboard on a mark of 67. He's a course and distance winner, and he's a horse that has popped up at a big price on a couple of occasions and I think that uh, he's one that at 8-1 to one in the market throw into the mix and then another runner that I like number 9 raised the red lantern raised the red lantern 4 cages off the back from Sianda Sosibo he only carries 52 the pace is going to be on and this horse is going to be rattling home in the closing stages of the race he's course and distance suited 1200 meters right up his alley and I think Razor Red Lantern will run an absolute cracker show. 7 to 1 about him, 8 to 1 about Jean Paul. I think those are the value horses in the race, Sheldon. Certainly can be. And you mentioned the place accumulator the other week and some of the results. There were some big results, some 40 to 1s, 50 to 1s coming through. How's about number four, undisclosed? 66 to 1 and 15 to 1 a place. I know it's really off form at the moment. This is a horse who's come down in the ratings. And if this horse had to bring his A-game, he's obviously had issues in his recent starts, maybe one for the quartets? Could certainly be one for the quartet, Sheldon. In these sprint races on the turf track, you can get just about any result. So a horse like Underslow, certainly one that I think you could throw into the mix. Well, that's a look at the eight race program at Fairview as we take you onto the short list. And I can promise you it's a very short list as it's a very, very tricky card. So let's take a look at the short list where race two, number eight, dreamt I could fly, hopefully spreads those wings and runs an absolute cracker. Place Accumulator Banker, race three, number six, Douglas Devastator. This is a horse who could be in the mix of things, just looking to run into the money. And then finally, race four, number three, American Landing, was once upon a time very highly regarded and high up in the ratings. Ten draws, Samanga Kamala board. I'm just hoping that American Landing can run a big race. Rahil, looking at the card overall, there's always value to be had at Fairview. Absolutely, Sheldon. And as I mentioned earlier, I think it's a meeting where you could get some fair results. And the place accumulator does look to be the bet that you want to get involved in. There we have a look at the shortlist. And from Rahil, Rahil and myself, Sheldon Peters, hopefully we can find some value on the card. And we leave it to the horses to do their best on the race course.